Well, what did happen for the Buckeyes was just their third loss of the year and obviously by far the most costly. Let's get into how it happened, Jim, with the principal financial group edge to the game. I want to talk about both sides of the court because obviously they struggled on both ends of the floor. Let's start on the offensive end. What was the principal financial group edge to the game? What went wrong here for Ohio State? Well, first of all, you look at this Coach Calipari, a former professional coach, also a college coach, brought his game, his, his playbook to the table. Offensively, not enough space. And here's a great play right here where you isolate the weak side, you get Jared Southern to shot. But throughout most of this game, look at the spacing. David Lottie stays there. His man can dig down. No space for Jared. This was going on all night. You have to cut through and clear space to allow Jared to, to be able to operate. If you're John Diebler, the defense is going to stay up. Now he has room to work. If not, he doesn't have room to operate down low. And that's something that I saw all night, and they never made the adjustment. It was pretty obvious that the strategy from Kentucky was you're going to dig down on Sullinger when you have the opportunity. And that play that you showed there was a prime example. Basically, you're going to cover him one-on-one, single cover him in the post. Don't let those other guys beat you on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. How do you counteract that if you're Ohio State? What could they have done differently? Well, basically what you do is you beat it with movement. If you put the ball inside to Jared Sullinger, allow him to work, you screen across, you're not stagnant. What happened was they were stagnant. So I don't know what was going on. But defensively, they didn't do a great job. Over the screen right here all night, they did not adjust. Right now, you want to be one man removed, cut through, and also cut the man off. When you do that, now um, the Kentucky uh, offensive player can't turn the corner. Too many times tonight, the Kentucky players wanted to go one-on-one. They wanted to get to the basket. They turned the corner, forced help. Now you have an open three-point shot. You have an offensive rebound. That was another area right there I thought that the, the defense didn't kind of make that adjustment that Kentucky didn't want to shoot jump shots. They wanted one-on-one dribble penetration to get to the basket. Yeah, the Wildcats shot nearly 52% from two-point range in this game. Compare that to Ohio State, just 31%. Katie Witham is in Newark and speaking now with John Diebler. Let's check in. Well, John, Ohio State shot barely 30 percent from the floor tonight was there one thing or another that just wasn't clicking offensively i think we got some good looks um they did a great job of challenging shots using their length and athleticism so it's just one of those games we didn't we didn't make shots josh harrelson having a big impact defensively specifically on sullinger did you see that coming no uh, we knew he was a big body down there but you know i think a lot of that is is we didn't get we didn't do a very good job of, of getting them the ball in the right spots, and that's on the guards. I think uh, there's times where we probably could have done a better job of getting them in better position, and especially when uh, when they're kind of hanging all over them all game. Um, it's got to be frustrating for them, but, but Jared's been awesome for us all year. You know, he's the best player in college basketball. It, tonight's result was not for lack of effort on your part out there. Specifically, walk me through what was going through your mind when you hit that three-pointer with seconds to go. Um, the the play didn't work that uh, we were going to run. They kind of cheated it, and I was just fortunate enough to break free and, and make a move. I think Jared set a really good ball screen up top, and just fortunate enough it went in, but just ran out of time there. I know. And, it probably hasn't sunk in just yet that it was your last game wearing scarlet and gray, but what has it meant to you to wear this jersey? It's been an honor. We um, to, to go to school at Ohio State, get my degree, Play four years here for, for the best coach in the country has been unbelievable. And just to go out with this group of guys that we have, it's been amazing. Sweet 16 still pretty good. Thank you, John. Thank you. Guys, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Katie, thanks. And it's interesting to hear John talk there. There's obviously a lot of experience on this Ohio State team. Diebler and Lighty are seniors. Buford's a guy who's been around. They do have the young players as well. But Kentucky is a far younger team why wasn't Ohio State able to take advantage of that experience, particularly down the stretch in this game? Well, what t- typically happens, if you're the higher-seeded team, the team that is supposed to win, when the game gets tight, the pressure switches on you, not the younger team. I take it back to my experience in 92. When we played Michigan, we beat them both times during the year. The games weren't that close. But in the Elite Eight, when it got close and got kind of tight, the pressure was on us. So we had to make – baskets we squeezed the ball a little bit too much and that's what you saw with the Ohio State Buckeyes tonight Kentucky played loose they played free they were able to kind of just go out there and freelance a little bit while Ohio State the team that's supposed to be there supposed to get to the final game maybe against Kansas 
didn't have that freedom to do that, and that was the difference in this game, especially late down the stretch up. And this was a team with a bullseye on their back, obviously the number one team in the nation. This is the 78th game all time in their history that Ohio State has played as number one. Just the sixth one they've ever lost. Three were in the NCAA championship game. Two were regular season games against the Wisconsin Badgers. This was the only one that wasn't either a championship game or a regular season game against Wisconsin.